Hey guys, it's David from Limpow here. Welcome to another episode of Invest Power series. I was really, really pumped because we just had our first first home buyer information night last night uh, in Sydney. And um, you know, as a first time public speaker, I think um, I was actually quite excited uh, and, I, and I felt the whole experience was quite good. We had about 15 people turned up and uh, which is reasonable and was expected and uh, the feedback has been quite good. So uh, if you guys are interested in attending our next upcoming event, which will probably be more in relation to property investors, then um, jump onto meetup.com and uh, follow our group called Sydney Property Fanatics and we'll be publishing any future events there. So uh, they're just a bit of tip for you guys, for anyone who like to see me and John Camino from Brick to Bridge to Bricks uh, to speak in our next event. So what are we covering today? I thought I'll touch on something in relation to shared rent because a lot of people at the moment looking to either to purchase their home or they're either rent vesting. And um, so they're currently paying rent, <clears throat> but if they are paying rent and some of the arrangements are like sublease uh, type of arrangements, I just want you guys to be aware of that. Uh, even though whatever that you're actually paying on the sublease rent amount, it's not necessarily what lenders will take as part of their calculation. And I'll explain why. So one of the scenarios that I thought I'll walk through today is Let's say, for example, you know, I'm the person that's on the lease. So I rent a two bedroom unit apartment. It's got two bedrooms, two bathrooms. And what I do is I sublease one of the bedroom to someone else. So let's assume that I'm paying a rent of $400 as per the lease agreement. And the bedroom that I sublease to the guy, I charge him $200. So he pays me $200 a week while I pay $400 to my landlord. Now, in that scenario, how would bank look at it? So you need to be mindful that not all lenders will take your rental expense at $200, which most people thought they would, but actually not. And that's where the misconception is because how lenders look at it is, let's just say, for example, my name is on the lease and not the other guy. And the, the other guy done a runner today without paying his portion of rent or the bedrooms goes vacant then I'm liable for all $400 a week of rental expense. So in this scenario, that's how lenders consider that. And lenders may ask during the servicing calculation to use $400 a week instead of what you think is the $200 a week. Okay, so that's the type of scenario. And you know, I've had a couple of customers come into me lately and they wrote on the fact fine form to say they're only paying $150 or something. And I say, well, actually let's clarify on that how much is your name first of all is your name on the lease and what is the full amount on the lease because i may have to use the full amount full rental expense on the lease as part of our servicing calculation depending on which lender that's going to suit your needs and not all lenders are created equal so there's certainly lenders that are willing to take whatever that you declare as the rental expense without verification or to an extent ask you to put through a statutory declaration to say, this is actually how much you are paying, okay? But in all honesty, my suggestion for people in this type of arrangement is to see whether you can get yourself out of the lease. So, because what banks look at essentially is if your name is on the lease, then you're responsible as part of the arrangement or the agreement. But if you're able to get yourself off the lease and you're the person that's actually just paying $150 to someone else, in other words, you know, if we revert the, the scenario around, I'm no longer the person that's on the lease, no longer paying the $400. I'm the actual person who's only paying for one bedroom and paying $200 to the person that's on the lease. Then essentially, and if you can demonstrate that you're only paying $200 to the person, so, you know, maybe $400 a week of transaction from your bank account to this guy with a description of saying rent or rental expense, then that could be used as verification to say $200 is exactly what your rental expense is. 
Okay, so this is very common and an important tip for those people who's looking at rent vesting, because rent vesting is you know the rental expense is probably the most key important element in the rent vesting side of things. Imagine the difference in terms of serviceability if you're calculating at two hundred dollars versus four hundred dollars. That's almost double your rental expense, and that just killed a lot of people's serviceability. So I thought I'll raise that today, just so that everyone who is planning to go on that path, you know, so that next time when you see your mortgage broker, hopefully it wouldn't be a surprise conversation about your rental expense. So there's our quick lending tip for today. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button or leave us a comment, subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any questions that you would like to know that's uh, particular to your circumstances, don't be afraid to reach out. You can contact me on david at lempower.com.au or simply just put a comment below. And what I'll do is I'll see you guys next time in Invest Power episodes.